Good evening, everyone. Um, it's uh, um, good to be with you this evening. Um, uh, been looking forward to um, this opportunity to um, dig into the Word of God uh, once again. Um, we're, uh, man, well, anyway, looking forward to uh, being back in the uh, behind the uh, uh, by behind the podium on Wednesday. Uh, for the Bible study uh, in the Revelation. Uh, looking forward to that for sure. Uh, but um, it is again good to be with you this evening. I uh, do have just a, um, a couple of announcements I do want to share with you. Uh, uh, there's another semester starting at uh, Carolina Bible Institute in Pine Level. Um, they've got um, some online classes uh, this semester, which is exciting. Um, if you need some information, um, you can go to info at cbibible.com uh, and get that information. Um, but anyway, um, they do have the online stuff that is uh, happening this semester. Uh, so uh, that's uh, if you want to take a Bible class, you don't have to commit to a degree or anything like that, but you can... Uh, uh, you can get some good Bible teaching. Uh, but anyway, uh, again, uh, it's good to be with you this evening. It's good to be here. I, I, I really long to be in the pulpit this morning, but I do want to take just a few minutes to uh, thank Pastor Will for uh, uh, stepping up um, as we uh, uh, weren't really expecting to uh, uh, contract <laughs> Corona. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, it just proves a point that, um, it can, um, it can slip up on you from any direction in any place, uh, which brings me also to, um, there's been several questions, uh, for right now, um, our services are going to be maintained as they are. Um, we're going to continue to do them the way we're doing them right now until things get a little better. Uh, so, uh. But you continue to be in prayer, and uh, we're we're hoping that things are going to start changing very soon uh, with everything that is going on. Um, but um, I do uh, again want to thank Pastor Will for stepping up um, and um, and filling the pulpit. Uh, did a wonderful, has done a great, great, magnificent job delivering the Word of God, um, and I'm so thankful for him uh, and his willingness to serve. I'm thankful for you, the church. I'm thankful for my church and those that have been praying. Um, and um, uh, we we do covet the prayers. We've been praying for you. Uh, and I've spent a lot of time um, trying to keep up and catch up and all uh, with those that, um, that, that, well, that have been going through different things. And uh, uh, we do want to take just a minute this evening to also... Um, uh, uh, send our love uh, to uh, the Crowder family, Miss Joyce and them. Um, and um, but we are looking forward to Wednesday night. And looking forward to being back in the pulpit. Uh, but anyway, uh, many prayer requests this morning. Uh, there were many names that were mentioned. Many people that stood in need. They were so uh, we want to continue to remember those. So um, uh, we're again we're doing well. Uh, but let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to the book of Nehemiah this evening. So uh, you can get your Bibles out and get ready to go to the book of Nehemiah. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this, your holy word. We thank you for this, the day of the Lord, that we can come together and open up the bread of life, whatever avenue that is. Lord, we thank you for social media. We thank you, Lord, most of all, for those that are faithful. Uh, to your church. Lord, we do pray that you will continue to bless. Uh, Lord, as we go through 2021, Lord, we pray that you will open doors of opportunity, that we may minister more and more each and every day uh, and each and every week, and that, Lord, this will be a year of the Lord uh, where the kingdom of God will prevail. Lord, for we know that your return is imminent, and it is soon. And, Lord, we just uh, let, use us as a light that the world might see uh, Christ uh, is King and is coming again. 
lead us, guide us, and direct us. Bless those that have been mentioned today uh, that are sick and suffering and those that are lost and undone. Lord, bless the reading and expounding of your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay. All right. Well, uh, as I said, um, uh, you uh, uh, open your Bibles to the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8. Uh, this is where we're going to be at this evening. We're going to be dealing with the uh, verses 1 through 12. Um, we're going to deal with each verse individually tonight, um, one verse at a time, um, and we're going to uh, pull apart and um, and dig into um, the Word of God. We do want to use this evening, um, as, as we always say, uh, these are encouraging words from the Word of God. Um, they're not my words. Uh, they belong solely to the Lord Jesus Christ. They belong solely to our Heavenly Father. And so um, uh, as we uh, dig in, open up uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, starting with verse 1. Uh, and, and all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. Uh, the first thing that we see is, and the first thing that I want to note, is that it was the people that desired the word of God. Uh, wouldn't it be magnificent today if this country all of a sudden um, desired the word of God? Uh, that they just all of a sudden they couldn't live another moment without somebody uh, reading the word of God. Now, I want to uh, point out that uh, Nehemiah uh, was in bondage in Babylon and God freed him. Uh, he gave him a task to do. And so God set him free from Babylon to go back to rebuild the walls and the gates uh, to restore security and confidence to uh, to Israel. Uh, that's what his job was. That's what he was sent uh, to Jerusalem to do, was to rebuild the walls, rebuild their security, and give them confidence. And you know, and a lot of times what we need to remember is, is that it's the word of God that gives us strength and that gives us confidence. Uh, it's the word that, that, that gives us the confidence that we need each and every day. Um, but that's what Nehemiah was sent there for. But this is not speaking of Nehemiah. This is speaking of Ezra. Uh, Ezra, it says the scribe, but he's also in verse two, uh, he's the priest. Now, Ezra arrived in Jerusalem, just a little history on, uh, on this. Uh, Ezra arrived in Jerusalem 15 years before Nehemiah arrived. He was sent also by God. He was, Ezra was in captivity in Babylon also, but he was also freed by God to go back to Jerusalem for a purpose. Ezra's purpose for going back to Jerusalem was to restore worship, to restore unto them the word of God. And that's what is so important about us as disciples of Christ today. And each and every one of us are disciples, okay? Uh, if you believe you've, you've, you've been washed in the blood, you've repented of your sins, um, <clears throat> then um, uh, you're a, um, well, you're a disciple. Uh, so, um, so we need to start acting like disciples. We need to start acting like messengers. We need to start acting like uh, the ones that God has called for a task and for a purpose. <clears throat> so here they were gathered. The people gathered themselves together. Um, they desired the word of God. They were hungry for it. And, and the, the place that they were speaking of before the water gate was a huge kind of like open spot. Uh, in the city, it was like a courtyard. Uh, one of the commentators estimated based on Nehemiah chapter 7 um, that there was possibly somewhere between 30,000 or so, 50,000 people 
that would have been gathered there. Um, but Nehemiah records in chapter 8 that they gathered themselves together as one man. They didn't come as individuals. They came united. They came for one purpose. They came for one reason. And does that sound familiar? When you get into the New Testament, that's the exact call that is upon the church, is that we come together to worship. We come together as one body for one purpose. It says that they came together as one man into the street before the water gate, into that courtyard, uh, and they called to Ezra the priest and had him, wanted him to bring the book of the law of Moses. <clears throat> now, the book of the law would have been the Pentateuch, would have been uh, the Torah as known today. Um, we know that he didn't read, that there's no possible way that in the six hours or so that he was uh, reading that he read the whole Torah, that he read the first five books um, of what we consider today our Bible, uh, which would be the Pentateuch um, <clears throat> at that time. Now, there's no way that in six hours that he read all of that. Uh, so his main focus was more or less to reintroduce them to the law, um, to the law that was the Mosaic law. Uh, the laws that were given to Moses uh, for Israel, because you note that in verse one, he says, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. So they wanted to hear from God. Now, let me ask you a question, okay? And you know, I like questions. And uh, um, where is the desire, even in the, in, the, in the people that profess to be Christians, where is their desire to hear from God? Um, these people uh, were the chosen of God, but they were living in hard times at this time, and they yet they they desired the Word of God. And so, where is that desire at today? Why do people not desire? I mean, we have the opportunity. Uh, every one of us that has uh, the ability to watch this tonight online has the opportunity. Uh, to click share has uh, the opportunity to click uh, the messages that are sent out and um, share them. Because you see, the one thing that I do know is that we don't all have the same friend base. Um, now, I'm, I've, I've, I do know this, uh, that there are some that watch our uh, uh, the messages and apparently we talk too much about Jesus or something. I can't imagine what else it would be. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, they do, uh, they, they do block our, uh, our transmissions or the messages, uh, but that's okay. For everyone that does that, uh, there are those that will hear the word of God, and that's what's important. That's what we want, is we want people to hear the word of God. They had a desire for the word of God. They hungered for the word of God. They hungered for it. And so in verse 2, and Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women. So it wasn't just the men. There were men and women and all that could hear with understanding. And so what the word of God wants us to understand that anybody that could understand, that had understanding, that had the ability to hear and, and understand uh, were there. And upon the first day uh, of the seventh month. Now, I want to stop right there because um, the seventh month of in the Hebrew calendar would have been uh, approximately the month of October. Uh, this was a very important month for the Israelites, for, for, the, for Jerusalem and for the Jews. Uh, because the first day was celebrated as the Feast of the Trumpets. Uh, which is one of many feasts that they celebrate. Uh, the, the next one, um, the tenth day of the seventh month was the Day of Atonement. And this was the day that in uh, Old Testament time that they would come uh, to the priest with their sacrifice uh, for, their, for their sins for the year. And they would bring their sacrifice and the priest would... Uh, 
offer up that sacrifice uh, by the letting of blood. He would take that blood into the Holy of Holies and uh, pour it on the mercy seat. And, and it was all for the remission of sins of the Israelites. So, so the 10th day of the seventh month would have been the day of atonement. And the 15th day of the seventh month uh, was the Feast of the Tabernacles. Uh, so another feast there where they celebrated uh, once again uh, after the Day of Atonement, uh, there was another celebration. Uh, so it was very important, uh, and that's the reason why you see it in there in that way upon the first day of the seventh month, because this was an important time in Israel. So with that being said, he brought the law before the congregation, all men, women, and anybody that had understanding could, could, had understanding could hear the word of God. Wow. Um, wouldn't we really, wouldn't we really want everybody to hear the word of God? Uh, whether we believe it or not, he's coming soon. Return is, as I said in the prayer, his return is imminent. It's coming. It's going to happen. And I believe it's going to happen soon. I believe that we are not very far away from the return of Christ. But in verse three, uh, to continue on, um, he read the, uh, he read the word of God, um, early in the morning, uh, and he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday. This was about six hours worth of time uh, before the men and the women and those that could understand the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Now, what I thought was unique about that is is that most Christians today can't see it still for more than an hour. And here in Ezra's day or Nehemiah's day, they stood or sat for six hours. And the scripture says that they were attentive, not to Ezra, they were attentive unto the word of God. Oh, wow. Uh, we get, folks get fidgety after, uh, after 50 minutes. And God forbid that you get into lunchtime. Uh, they don't just get fidgety, they get irritated. Uh, it's fun sometimes as a preacher when the Holy Spirit's uh, dragging you a little bit long and the message is still rolling and you hit that 12 o'clock mark and from where we stand, we can see you looking at your watches. Uh, so, um, so it, it becomes interesting sometimes, but, but at the same time, what does that tell us about our love with God? What does that tell us about the love that we have in our heart for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? You see, most people don't fast anymore. There's the fasting and praying is a, is a big part of, of scripture, they don't fast anymore because they're not that dedicated. There's not that much dedication anymore. This is, this is, they were attending to the word of God from morning to midday, a six hour period. From early morning unto noon. And Ezra read to all the people old enough to understand. He didn't preach. He didn't do three points in a poem. He didn't do his introduction, three points in a poem uh, and a conclusion. Uh, he didn't get up there and preach. He did not get up there, yell, spit, holler, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he got up there and he read the word of God. And we, we really honestly and truly, that's what we need to be attentive to is the word of God. We need to be listening to what thus saith the Lord. Uh, Ezra read, and, and, and then in the next, in verse four, 
It says, And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And then beside him stood the Levites, stood the priests. Now, I'm not going to attempt all the names. Y'all can do that in your spare time after the message this evening. Uh, but um, um, I'm not even going to attempt them tonight. I'm going to blame it on the fact that um, um, I'm just getting over being sick. How about that? Um, <laughs> no, it's just that I can't pronounce them. I'm from Wayne County. Uh, not, they're not Wayne County names. But anyway, Ezra stood. He stood for six hours in a pulpit. That would kill most preachers today. Um, that would kill most of them for the fact that uh, uh, just standing up there for a uh, uh, 35, 40 minute sermon, um, they are wore out. Uh, but um, there again, it says something about our dedication and our love for God compared to the love that the people had uh, for the word of God and for God and also in Ezra's uh, uh, life that he he was willing to stand there and read to the people as long as they wanted to hear. As long as they would stay, he was willing to read to them. But he stood in a pulpit. The only time that that word is used in the scriptures. Uh, and they built it. They built it for that purpose. Thirteen Levites stood with him. What were the Levites' purpose? Well, the Levites we know from the Old Testament were the priests. Uh, they were called by God. The tribe of Levi was called to be the priest under Jerusalem or into, under Israel. Uh, so um, these were the Levites. Then their purpose was, uh, as we'll see later on, their purpose was to explain as, as Ezra read, they were to explain to the people. They were to be out in the crowd. They were to explain to the people what the word of God said. Uh, so all the bases were covered so that everybody could have understanding. That everybody that was able to understand could understand. Verse 5 says, And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. For he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood. Now, uh, I want to point out that a lot of times uh, until COVID hit, uh, that was a lot of the reasons. That was why we, uh, why we stood for the reading of God's word. Uh, we stood out of reverence for the reading of God's word. Uh, he opened the book. He opened it in front of them. He opened it. Uh, and they could see him and he opened it and all the people stood. They rose in honor of God's word. They rose to honor God. You see, church, it doesn't matter what's going on in the world around us today. It does not matter what's going on in our lives and our families. We are called to honor God. Our lives and everything that we do is supposed to honor God. It's supposed to honor him above all. That's the purpose. They stood. But now you got to understand something. You got to remember that it was them that gathered. They called for it. They desired it. They hungered for it. And love to show up on uh, Wednesday night and there'd be a church full of people hungry uh, for the word of God. Or Sunday morning for, for uh, a, a, a bunch of people that were uh, hungry for the word of God. Uh, now, I don't know how hungry they are. Uh, some are hungrier for other things. But anyway, um, to be hungry for the word of God, that would be so wonderful. Uh, just to open up the word of God and, and, and people get fed because it wasn't, it wasn't how he presented the word of God. It was the word of God that made the difference. Now watch verse six. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. Ezra blessed the Lord. 
he gave praises to the Lord before teaching the word. He gave praises. He, you know, this is the way we start out. You see, even the model prayer teaches us that we praise, then we present our petitions, and then we praise again. That's the way the model prayer goes. That's the way Christ taught us or taught the disciples to pray was you praise him first because he's worthy whether we like it or whether we, whether we agree or the world agrees with us or not. He likes to be praised. He's worthy of the praise. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, before teaching the word of God. And the people responded. Man, that's, that's it. You see, um, so many churches today have got to have the rock star bands and all of that stuff going on to get praise going. Um, according to the book of Nehemiah and according to the word of God, it should be the word of God that gets us praise and it should be the word of God because they raise their hands. Look at what it says. And all the people answered, amen, amen, with lifting up their hands and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. You see, the thing is, is that it was just, it was just opening the word of God that brought them to this point. Just opening the word of God. We as Christians should be encouraged by just the opening of the word. Now, I'm not going to get me wrong because somebody's going to send me a message. Well, what have you got against music? I don't have anything against music. I like music. I love music. I love, I think it has an ex, it, it's, a, it's a vital part of worship. I get it. But I'm trying to point out to you tonight that it wasn't <clears throat> anything other than, excuse me, it wasn't anything other than the opening of the word of God and the fact that the, that the priest, that Ezra praised the Lord, that got the people to praising, it was just a thought of. It was just the presence of the word of God that got them to praise him. Mm. Man. Be nice if we, if, if all Christians got that excited when they opened their Bibles up. And maybe they wouldn't. Maybe they do. Maybe I just don't know it. But maybe they do. But um, they lifted their hands. Yeah. That right there tells you that um, um, uh, that they were, um, well, anyway, uh, they lifted their hands. They said amen. They bowed their heads and they worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And then in verse 7, you get another glimpse of some more of the Levites and it tells you that they were the Levites. Uh, in the latter part of that, um, uh, verse seven, it says, and caused the people to understand the law. In other words, these were the Levites. They were doing what they were supposed to be doing. They were explaining what was going on to those that had understanding. You see, the thing that, 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 that they wanted was to make sure that everybody had that worship experience, that everybody heard and understood the word of God. I've seen it before. There's been some great preaching. A lot of great preaching. I've heard some great preaching. I've heard a lot of people preach. Uh, I've listened to a lot of preaching today. Um, from home. But at the same time. You can't just preach to people. They have to be taught. They have to be taught the word of God. Preaching to them for uh, doing a 20 minute, 20, 25 minute sermon. Uh, it's good. But what need, what is needed and what they need, what we need is people to hear 
what people need to hear is they need to be taught the word of God. Taught so that they can have understanding. That's the encouragement is that we have understanding. We have that ability. And then again, now here in verse eight, we see uh, verse eight uh, says, so they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. That's what the Levites were doing. They read in the book of the law distinctly, with purpose, with intent, so that they would have a sense of understanding, that they would cause them to understand what was being read. Now, all I want you to do tonight is I want you to understand something, okay? I want you to understand that we are to hunger for the word of God. We are to hunger for it. We are desiring it. We need it. We should want it above all things. And then you notice in verse nine, you notice what happens. Now, Nehemiah, Nehemiah comes on the scene. And Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not. Now I want you to I want you to understand now that they asked for the word of God. They hungered for it. And when they when they were presented with the word of God, it broke them. It broke their hearts. It convicted their hearts. It broke them to the point that they mourned and wept. They mourned and wept just over the reading of the word of God. And, and Nehemiah and Ezra, the scribe and the Levites that taught the people said to them, it's a holy day. It's a holy day. It's the first day. It is the feast of the trumpets. It is a holy day. Don't mourn. Don't weep. Don't cry. It says, for all the people wept. They wept. And all that had happened was the reading of the word of God. You see, I'm a firm believer that if, if we want to be convicted in our hearts, all we have to do is read the word of God. If we want to be convicted in our hearts of, our, of, of things in our lives, you see, God hasn't changed his stance. I, I know that the world is trying to water down sin and make it okay. But God hasn't changed his stance. He has not changed his view at all, okay, on that. If he called it sin in the beginning, he'll call it sin on the final judgment day. Keep living in it, and you get to see him at the great white throne. Like it or not, that's just the way it is. That's the facts of the word of God, okay? But, they wept, says all the people wept when they heard the word of the law. When they heard the word of the law, all the people wept. It broke them. Brothers and sisters, it's a good thing to be broken. You see, the potter can't fix the clay. The potter can't fix the vessel if it's not broken. And if you don't acknowledge your brokenness, then he can't fix it. It's when we acknowledge our brokenness that he fixes it. The word of God broke them. It broke them to the point that they wept. Convicted of sin. 
the people mourned and wept. Oh, but it didn't end. It didn't end. Then, in verse 10, it says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Mm. could do a whole sermon on just uh, verse 10. Uh, they were broken. And then they're told to go. To go their way. They've been there from early morning to noon. They've been there from early morning to noon. And now they are told to go because it is a holy day. It is a day of feasting. It is a day that they're supposed to be celebrating. They've had the word of God. They've heard the word of God. Now they are told, don't weep no more. Go and rejoice. Go and rejoice in your heart. Go and, and eat. Eat of the fat. Drink of the sweet. And then I want you to pay real close attention, okay? They went home to celebrate the festival. With a meal. But you notice what God said to him, right? He said, don't forget to send a portion unto them whom nothing is prepared. He says, if you have it, if you have it, you've been blessed with it, you share it with someone who don't. Hmm. So in other words, don't, don't, don't forget those in need, which is kind of like what we ask whenever we ask you to uh, give to um, the blessing box. The blessing box. We say, if you've been blessed, be a blessing. If you need a blessing, take a blessing. Uh, we contribute to Cam. I mean, we contribute to them because they feed people in the community. That's why we do it is so that we can be a blessing. And that's, that's, that's what we're called to do. And that's what they were told to do right here in Nehemiah. Don't forget, when you fix that meal, when you fix it in your celebration, don't forget those that don't have. But then you can go back to um, the Exodus too. Uh, on the night of the Passover, um, that was the command that, that was given to the Israelites by God through Moses was that if your neighbor don't have a lamb, then you invite your neighbor and his family over to your house to participate in eating in the sacrifice and the eating of your lamb that they would be under the blood. Um, that's the word of God, brothers and sisters. So the Levites still all the people, verse 11, saying, hold your peace, for the day is holy, neither be ye grieved. Again, do not grieve your hearts. Do not grieve your hearts. You hungered for the word of God. You've been fed the word of God. Now rejoice, rejoice in what you've learned from the word of God. What you heard from God. Not what you heard from Ezra. Not what you heard from Nehemiah. Not what you've heard from Pastor Stanley. But what you have heard from the word of God. What you've heard from the word. Don't be grieved. Hold your peace. For the day is holy. In verse 12. To finish up tonight. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth because they had understand, understood the words 
that were declared unto them. And they went their way rejoicing. They went their way to celebrate the feast, praising God, loving on others as they were told to do. They were making merry. They were enjoying life but they were enjoying life because they had heard and understood the word of God. Brothers and sisters, I do pray. I pray that what you've heard tonight, I pray that you've understood. I pray that God has spoke to your hearts. I pray, I pray that he's placed within you a hunger for his holy word. May God bless you. May he watch over and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he shower you with mercy and grace this week. Again, I'm going to be there Wednesday night unless the Lord returns. If you're able, you're not sick, and you'd like to come and listen to the word of God, you'd like to do participate in the Bible study of the revelation, then come on out and be a part of it at Everett Chapel. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your holy word. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do. And Lord, we just ask you now to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. And Lord, to be with us throughout this week. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, all you're doing. And Lord, I just thank you for those that were listening. Bless each and every one. And may you, Lord, be magnified and glorified. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he watch over you. May he lead, guide, and direct each and every day of your life. And look, just so you'll know, um, uh, that word mirth means to make great rejoicing, okay? To rejoice. So they went home celebrating. May God bless you. Again, come see us on Wednesday night. Come join us. Be a part of it. We'd love to have you. God bless. See you soon.